Being a digital investigator can be dangerous. Whether you're law enforcement or a corporate investigations team, you don't want the people you're investigating to be able to trace your activity back to your office. And this is where Authenticate comes in. They have a tool called Silo for research and they've asked me to show it to you. Now, this is a sponsored video. However, as always, I only showcase tools that I actually like and all opinions in this video are my own. And if you're a digital investigator or you're hoping to be one someday, this is a tool absolutely worth seeing. Oh, and before I forget, Authenticate has a podcast. It's called Needle Stack. I've been on it. Absolutely worth checking out. Link is in the description. So this is what the platform looks like once you log on. You got the admin, button, the training button, which is fantastic by the way, they've got a raft of training in here. It covers everything, even dark web and dark web research training, things like that. Then you can see there's a Tor button. That's my own Tor instance that I can just click one button and spin it up nice and easy. And everything else you see, Europe, Asia, Middle East, South America, etc. Those are just different exit nodes where I can pop out as an investigator. So I'm not using my office or my home network when I'm doing research. And that's crucial when it comes to attribution because if you come up against a capable company that you're investigating or a government for some reason you're investigating, let's say you're a journalist, you don't want to tip them off that they're being investigated. Now, if we look at the top menu bar here, you might be a little bit confused. That's understandable. This is essentially Chrome within Chrome. That's the best way I can describe this. Let's just change tabs. This is just my normal Chrome browser. As you can see, I've got two tabs open. One is called new tab. The other one is silo cloud browser. That is silo. I'm logged in there. If I come up here and type garyruddle.com, we get my website. Let's turn on network tools in developer mode. And we're in the network panel. Let's just refresh this page. And as you can see, there's a whole bunch of network traffic just popped up. So that tab generated loads of network traffic. Let's go to Silo and do the same thing. So here's the Silo Cloud browser. Inside of that browser, we get this other browser here, the white one. And if I turn on network tools again on my actual browser, and then here inside of Silo, well, we just click something, marry to first sight, let's go. As you can see, no network traffic at all, because what you see here in this little window isn't happening on my machine. It's happening on Authenticate's servers around the world. Perfect. And when I close this window, it's gone. Scorched earth. Never happened. So I hope that explains these two different rows of tabs. We're on the same page. So let's connect to one of these. Let's just jump into Europe. Here we go. We get a new tab. And here we are, Silo by Authenticate Managed Attribution Session. And you can see here the little hat with the glasses, do not visit or log into websites that could be associated to you or your organization. So don't go to your Facebook and log in GaryRuddle at gmail.com. Don't go to GaryRuddell.com. Don't do any of that stuff. You come here to do the work and you never put anything into this that could be associated back to you. Now, Silo for Research comes with a whole bunch of tools. They're all accessible through the toolbar in the top right-hand corner. I'm not gonna force you to squint to read these because they're smaller, but here you can see them. Location and appearance, we can change where we're popping out on the internet and how we appear to the web server that we're visiting. So if we want to look like an Android phone, we can do that. Let's just click here. As you can see, we're currently in France. So if I go and visit, GaryRiddell.com right now in Silo and then check Google Analytics on GaryRiddell.com. I should see a new visitor from France, which is me here in this session. That's how that works. I'm currently appearing as Chrome Linux 64 bit and there's an IP address here, which I've blurred out for protection reasons for Authenticate's network. And if I click change, you can see here we can change to look like Safari on an iPad. So when we visit a website now, in the logs, it'll look like someone is browsing on an iPad using Safari. Next up, we got Silo Drive. That's this little button here. And there's no downloads in this session, but if I click the Silo Drive button, you can see we get this sort of 
folder structure, like a temporary drive, and it's currently empty, when we start taking screenshots and downloading files, things will be saved into this space and other people in our organization can access them too so we can work collaboratively. So we'll bank this one for later. Next up is the screenshot tool. We'll bank that one for later as well when we're on an actual website. Then we got the keyboard tool. If you don't know, when you visit a website, that server gets to learn things about your computer. If you've ever ran things like Google Analytics yourself, you'll know that you can see what web browser, what device type, what language of the person is visiting that website. You get loads more data than that. And keyboard information can be shared in that digital transaction. If we wanna mask our identity as much as possible, we can make it look like we are browsing the CIA's website from South America with a Russian keyboard. Makes it really hard to attribute that back to Gary in Edinburgh. So if I click secondary, we can change different keyboards here. There we go, Russia. We can click show the keyboard as well. And it pops up here if we wanna type using specific keys. So yeah, that's why you'd wanna change your keyboard. The little T is the silo translation tool. We'll come onto that later. The magnifying glass is the multi-site search. You can build these workflows and make them completely custom. It'll become more apparent what it does in a moment. But let's just choose this top one, domain URL search. And if I search for garyrudell.com and hit submit, it's gonna load these four tabs because that's what's built into that workflow. Just load these four tabs and search for garyrudell.com within them. So virus total, we got a hit. No security vendors flag this domain as malicious. dnsdumpster.com, we did get a hit as well. This one, if we click authorize, we got a hit. So I hope you get the idea. You can build workflows to suit your team's needs and save them in here so you don't have to open tab after tab after tab, typing in all the different URLs and then entering in search queries. It just saves so much time and time is money. Next up is Silo Collector and this is really cool. This lets you take screenshots and downloads of websites on a recurring basis and save them into a folder. I love it. So we'll click on this. New job, job type, video, single asset, visual, normal screenshot, not zoomed in. I want it to emulate an iPad Pro in landscape mode so the server thinks we're an iPad. Save a PDF, ignore certificate errors. We're gonna call it GR website daily, address, GaryRiddell.com. Egress, where do we want to go from? We'll just go from the authenticate server. Storage location, we'll just save it to temporary storage. We want it to start immediately and we want a recurring task. Let's go to the page. We want it to repeat every day for 30 days. User agent, we'll choose Safari on iPad because that makes sense with the iPad in landscape mode. And then I'll hit save. And that's it, it's gonna run. It's gonna take screenshots of the whole web page, and then it's gonna save it into a zip folder. Fantastic. All right, let's go do some translation, some screenshots, cause you need to see how that works. Let's go to garyrudell.com. And if we click the T and we choose English, and then we choose something else, let's go with French, translate page, my website has no idea that this page is being translated. If you use Google Translate, my website will know that it's being translated with Google Translate. You can figure that out. But this translation is happening within this isolated browser and it's not happening on the server, it's happening here inside of Silo. That's a game changer. One of the issues I have is that I don't speak anything other than English and a terrible amount of French. So if I wanna do some research, I have to go to some Russian or Chinese website and then use Google Translate to do the translation. And those web servers know that it's being translated in the moment. So it kind of gives it away to them that this is a non-native user of the website. This solves that problem. As an investigator, I have to take screenshots all the time and they have to be forensically appropriate. Dates, times, URLs have to be all baked into it. 
And that's what this does. This screenshot tool isn't just, you know, snipping tool on Windows or screenshot on Mac OS. Let's have a look. We can select a page element, a selected area, the visible page, so what we can see, or the entire page with auto scroll. And that's cool. So let's just click that. Click the entire page. Capture from here. And it's scrolling down my web page, taking screenshots, building them all into one big long list. Look, all these testimonials and stuff all being put into one big long screenshot and saved into the temporary drive in a second. Here we go. This is what you get after you take a screenshot. If I just scroll down here, this isn't my website anymore. This is the actual picture, the screenshot of the website. There's my site back here. What you get is save and copy. You also get to include the timestamp, which is important as always. Show the page URL. Then we can also draw things. We can draw lines and circles and text boxes and notes and little things like that. So if you want to mark something with one, two, three, four and draw lines between them all, you can do that. Let's save this. It opens up the silo secure storage area in this temporary drive and you can see the file name is screenshot www.garyruddle.com and then the reverse date and the time.png. Let's save that. And now if I click on my drive, you can see here a recent file, but we could click this to open up the whole drive. And there it is. Let's double click on this. And there we go. There's the whole screenshot. If I click, it zooms it in. Click again, zooms it out. Everything's there. Perfect. And maybe you don't need the whole page for some reason. Maybe you just want to capture one specific thing off that page. So let's just say, for example, you wanted to save this picture that I have here of this iPhone. You could click the screenshot tool, page element, and then as you move around the page, it just hovers over every single element, every paragraph of text, every image. And all you got to do is click, save image. And then it saves it into the silo drive. It's as easy as that. And all of it is not being attributed back to you in your organization. Okay, there's one last thing we need to look at, and that is the one-click access to Tor. Let's check it out. Back here, we click on Tor. As you can see, this looks identical almost to the previous view, except you got an onion here instead of a little French flag. So we're on the Tor network. We still do have access to the clear web here, but we also have access to the dark web. So let's go find some dark web sites. I'm just gonna type in CIA Tor site URL. Here we go, this is the CIA's onion URL. So here we are, cia.gov, and then the big crazy string of text, .onion. So we are indeed on the dark web, we're on Tor. And the beauty of this is you could download anything you want. Let's say you're like me and you do cyber threat intelligence. You could go download all the malware into the silo isolated browser and it's harmless. It's never going to infect your machine. That is peace of mind. If you want to check out Silo for research, I put a link in the description that you can use happy and safe investigating.